you had a fancy suit out last night. Yeah, that's pretty standard. I told someone at one point that I was like, eh, it's not my favorite. I think I've liked other ones better. And they <laughs> looked at me and they were like, you're crazy. It was a, like a navy suit that it was pinstriped, but the pinstripes were almost like chalk. Exactly. Chalk, almost silverish. But of course, you know where I put. You didn't look at. like the Yankees, Paris, France. Paris, Texas. I like that you get to go to Paris in the summer and I get to go look at the Eiffel Tower in Las Vegas. Dan, you also need to spend some time with your family during the summertime. Yeah. Welcome to the Times Lakers Show. Host in season tournament edition. BT. Yes, sir. What's the cheapest suit you've ever bought? Like in adulthood. Like, would you buy a, a $150 suit? Cheap suits don't last long. Cheap clothes don't last long. So you have to buy, I'm not saying buy expensive clothing items, but you buy something that you understand that if you take it to the cleaners, you'll get it it's back. It's not going to fall apart. I will tell you when I'm not going to wear a suit PT in Las Vegas this week. Oh. Um, because I will be there. You may be there as well. The like Lakers the... will be there. Yes. They have advanced in the in-season tournament. They have um, followed their destiny for the centuries. That, that destiny. They will, that they will win the most hallowed of cups in the NBA. The NBA Cup. BT. We joke. What an awesome night. What a fun, fun game. It feel like a conference finals playoff game. It did to me. Like, like the energy was right where it was at the end of last season. No, I would agree, and it helped that you had LeBron James. Yeah, absolutely. Anthony Davis. Yep. Let's not forget about Austin Reeves. Sure. And you had Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and a Phoenix Suns team. They're going to say Grayson Allen just to balance it out. Well, let's not go that far. He went to Duke anyway. We don't like Dukies around here. Do you know who he looks like, right? Not like you, but who? Ted Cruz. <laughs> he absolutely was. looks like Ted Cruz. And you have a Phoenix team that actually knocked the Lakers out of the playoffs. Sure. Right, a couple of years ago. And there's been history with these two organizations over the years. All Laker coaches over yes, on the Phoenix bench. Laker coaches, yes, they were. Up and down the roster, up and down yeah. that bench. So there full was of people that. who. But the bottom line was it was a tense, tight, taunt, exciting game. So I wrote this, and I, I, you know, when you, when you sit down to write PT, and I, I think sometimes we all struggle with this, is like there's what you want to say and what you're able to, to put on paper in front of you. I think the thing that I really wanted to try to get across was that, and we've joked about it here, I can't undersell how much that they have spoken about the money. Like they talk about the money. They don't talk about the prestige. They haven't talked about the competition, really. They've talked about the money. This has been the sort of joke, wink, wink, like, you know, I had a conversation with Anthony Davis about Nevada State taxes recently. Okay. <laughs> like, like, so. As if. That being said, I think last night, what that really showed me is that this isn't just about the money. That this Correct. is about legacies. This is about a desire, especially to be first in something. It's about competition that if you give these guys – you know, anything to compete for, they'll do it. These are LeBron set up post game. Yes, he did. Some of the most competitive people in the world. I talked to some people who've been around LeBron for a long time, and they said they thought LeBron James last night was like as Cleveland yes. LeBron James as that he's been since word. he's been in LA. That was the word I was also told. And it's, they saw how excited he was. He played, what, 40 minutes? I think I saw Stairways, maybe the oldest guy ever to get five steals. Yes. Think about that. And as LeBron said, you're competing against Kevin Durant. Sure. Someone he's going against a lot over his career. Mm -hmm. They had this period of time where they didn't play each other, so they respect that about each other, and they want to bring out the best in each other, and they want to beat each other. You have, I don't want to call him young, Devin Booker. That dude's a dog. But I'll call him youngish. Man, dude can, he can do it. Rough, get rough, it done. rough first half for Devin Booker in that game. But I think, yeah. But I mean, first half, yes. But when it came down to it, he's competitive, man. Uh, he's a fighter. I think, um, I think you're right. But like to me, it was LeBron flying around the court defensively. It was the kind of defensive effort he doesn't give on a night to night basis. And he's so good on offense, and he's still so good on offense that you can, you can excuse it. 
largely that like this isn't you know you you can't drive around the town with your foot on the gas all the time. Dan, he'll be thirty nine years old this month. I know. By the way, he's also a Capricorn. I'm just saying, because Capricorns do it like that. What does that mean? We do it like that. You understand what that means? His youthful like sort of energy is like kind of well documented. Like I mean, Austin Reeves always jokes that it's like like it's like it's like playing with like a twenty two year old a lot of times. But like you do see it on the court. Like you see him laboring. You see him at times tired. Uh, in Oklahoma City, there were possessions after possessions where he couldn't cross midcourt defensively or didn't. I don't know if couldn't isn't the right word. I remember after that game we were talking and it, I don't know, I think it, it was just kind of old guy chatter because I'm 42, he's going to be 39. Um, we were just saying like it felt like game nine of a four-game road trip. Uh, us, by the way, a real fun. I love fun, that. A real fun to us. What is, to see you make a layup, Dan, let alone a jump shot. Cam Reddish told me the other day he thought I'd go 0 for 15 from the corners. I'd agree with that. No way. What, we're gonna maybe we get over the facility and shoot that. I'd take that bet. No way. I, I gotta say, I liked it because all the key pieces, all the keyest pieces, all had big moments. Anthony Davis, dominant first yes. half. Fade a little bit in the second half as he's sort of known to do, but that's teams adjust. Right. They throw more bodies at him and stuff like that. I'd like to see him be a little more aggressive in the second half of games, but what are you gonna do? I would say more than aggressive, demanding. Sure. It's not his personality. No. But demand the ball some more. And I really would like to see Darwin draw up some plays where it's well, just for him, no matter what. They don't really the, run a lot of plays. They don't. It's just not really their off. But you can still run back in the old days, fist up, one up, whatever it is. Give the ball to Anthony Davis. Austin Reeves had a huge third quarter. Yes, he really did. like saved the day because um the Lakers played as bad of uh, basketball as a team can play in 120 seconds. I think, I mean, you were, you were getting back, you know, from the bathroom line or something like that at halftime. Well, maybe, you know, maybe, had was, a, maybe had a glizzy. You know who was in there? I did. No, I held the lineup. Yes, there was an issue. We had a, we had a celebrity in the bathroom. Yes, we Kim did. Kim Kardashian in our bathroom last night. Um, but the, um, you know, 120 seconds, like the 10 point lead is gone. 12 point lead is gone. Which to me just showed that's a glimpse of how great Phoenix can be. Oh, I thought that was just a total Lakers meltdown. No, I mean, see this. I thought they things. handed they handed the Suns of the ball to it's, start the half, they and they did. took they took dopey shot after dopey shot, jumpers. I agree. Uh, they're a bad jump but shooting who team. Who was to take advantage of that? The Phoenix Suns, sure. And so I I it that way. I am I am uh, I have I have Suns questions. You do have two Suns, but go ahead. Yeah, neither of them are point guards either. Um, I think, like, I, I have some concerns about Phoenix's defense, about their fouling, uh, about their overall depth, and obviously about their organization. Um, another fourth quarter where they were, um, you know, I don't want to say outplayed by the Lakers, but, like, they couldn't score. I mean, there were big chunks of that quarter where neither team could score. I, I know there was one moment I looked up and I thought, oh, my gosh, the Lakers are only up two here. Like, it felt like they should have been up seven or eight based on the stops they were getting and just didn't materialize. Um, I want to, let's, here, let's, let's get into the weeds a little bit about this game because there was some controversy. There was some there controversy. Was, there was some fun post-game scenes we saw. Um, let's, we'll be right back with more on the in-season tournament and, uh, and then we'll get me off to Vegas. All right, welcome back to the Times Lakers show. You're watching us on YouTube. This is Dan. I will. This is I am Dan Wykey. You are Dan Wykey. No one would like. No one would make up such a silly name. You are Broderick Turner, a very cool name. Well, pretty cool guy, Dan. There was someone I think last night. One of the Lakers security guards said something about your suit, and then they looked at me, and I said, <laughs> "That's a little showy." I just I'm a little more naturally charismatic. Mm. Charismatic. BT, I don't, know, I don't like, know if it was showy or not. I just thought it was just it was just my style. Did you dress up because it was a bigger game? I did not. Dan, of course not. Come on, man. You know me. You're not wearing that suit. Disrespect intended. How about You're not wearing that suit Saturday against the Portland Trailblazers. Or on a Sunday against Oklahoma City. You're correct about that. Under. Producer Mark is going to snipe you on the way out. He's going to be eh, mad. Okay. He's just going to tackle you. I mean, I wouldn't even take that suit to Oklahoma City. Do you like Oklahoma City? Do you like, did you like going there? My favorite thing about Oklahoma City? Leaving? Yes. All right. Let's talk, though, about in-season tournament. 
let's just start at the let's start at the end. Um, did the Suns get job? Did they get jobbed? BT Frank Vogel not one to complain like that. Uh, very true. Uh, very upset. You could like. By the way, in fr- very upset in Frank Vogel, like he was very politely annoyed. <laughs> was really what he it was. Really was. <laughs> it was more like no, didn't get a good one, didn't get a good one. I mean, I I was in a room when Frank Vogel had been sort of fired. Like, yes. A- and and he was still like he was upset and fuming, and was still like pretty composed. He's this, a, this wasn't he's that a nice angry. man. A he's very a very nice, nice person. Um, he was upset. Devin Booker <laughs> really ringing the bell. I love me. He goes, the whole world seen it. Everyone saw it. <laughs> not, the not whole saw it. World. The whole world seen it. Yeah. Um, posted immediately on Instagram. By the way, a screen cap that means nothing. I didn't see that. He posted a picture. Like the picture of the ball is loose. LeBron's calling timeout. You can't there you can't tell anything by that. It it, it is it, it, it's a video world we're living in, Devin Booker. And because of that controversy, that created more drama for the game. Great drama. So let's explain it if we really didn't see it. Um, Austin, the Lakers are up two. Um, Phoenix has just scored. Austin Reeves just hit a massive three. Yes. Um, they inbound the ball. Phoenix, the Lakers concede a basket. Inbound the ball to Austin. Austin kind of like stops because it looks like Devin Booker's going to foul him. Devin Booker maybe bumps him, maybe doesn't. Okay. Hard to say. Austin kind of stumbles. And as he stumbles, he just has to dribble to not travel. No whistle, no whistle happens. Kevin Durant comes over. The ball squirts loose. And the if the Suns can recover it, it's a three on out, basically, inside the free throw line. Like it's almost they're either getting fouled or it's a tied game. Right. Or worse. Right? Or it's a three point play. LeBron James on the other side, of the other side of the court is signaling timeout. You cannot call a timeout if you don't have possession of the ball. Yes. This is one of the cornerstone rules of the NBA. Except that the referee said what? That the Lakers had possession of the ball. Because the ball was where? No, so that was upon the later they did super slow-mo that Austin Reeves had pinned the ball, that they were able to ascertain via super slow-mo that Austin Reeves had pinned the ball to his leg while LeBron James on the other side of the court was signaling timeout. So this is like the NFL. Was his knee down? Was his is it a catch, down? PT? Or was it you on top of the player before you fumbled the ball? I think, look, right? Like, Which one was it? In real time, I was surprised the Lakers got the timeout. I'll admit, all I saw was Austin fall down. Yeah. The ball sort of dislodged. And then you heard the whistle? And I heard the whistle. And when I heard the whistle, I, first thing I thought was, Lakers ball, someone called the timeout. Or maybe it had gone out of bounds or something like that. Like, it, it was a, no, 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 they called timeout a couple seconds ago. It was, like, kind of what it felt like. But I am not of the opinion, BT, that the, um, the fix is in in these situations. Oh. Like, I think, look, I mean, if the fix was in, we, no. we, the Indiana Pacers would not be on a plane. Uh, uh, and you the know, it'd, are, it'd be the Boston Celtics. The Suns have big enough stars and Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Sure, you can drive to Vegas from they Phoenix. go to Las Vegas and they're playing against New Orleans and as Zion Williams is playing, Ben Ingram is playing, you still have Ben Atacupo playing, and you have a young Tyrese Halliburton. You still have four really good teams. And you I have love how there. you, can we, can we just stop right there? I love how you said it. But Tyrese? said so Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton. Do you, uh, if you, you you are friends with a lot of Laker fans, your cigar shop buddies, yes. stuff like that, is there any world in which any of them are getting in a car? Are you kidding me? Why? You sit at the cigar bar, smoke a cigar, drink a little whiskey. This is bad news for the NBA, some by the wine, way. And well, not those guys want to do that, you know? They, Wait, they, do, they, do you, love, they love the Lakers. Do you think do you but know I would people tell you this, who will? They, 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 my cigar friends, Love the Dodgers just a little bit more. And they love the Cohibas. Yes. A little bit more. Than, Is there any that. world where they would get in a car and travel? These are working gentlemen. So, no. They, they'll sit there and, and they'll talk trash to me if yeah. I'm there. That's what well, one, of the things, one of the things that I had heard um, last night, an idea that was floated by a couple of people, was that maybe in the future will they do the semifinal games in home markets 
Is that something where you only do the finals like uh, on the road? Um, I'm, I'll be, I'm very curious to see how this is going to, I think the first stage of this has been as big of a success as the NBA could have hoped. Oh yes. The games are great. Um, the intensity was where it needed to be. The biggest stars legitimized it. Um, you always know it's a tournament game because of the ridiculous courts, the which, bright is courts. Fine, which is fine. Like whatever. You need to wear shades when it you walk in It just tells you, like, it just tells you what you're doing. Um, so now the issue is, like, now that it becomes, like, the event, like, if you go there and, like, it's sterile and, like, there's no energy, it's going to be kind of a dud. It's pumped in fans, you know? It's going to be kind of a dud. Um, I think that is sort of, that, that is what I'm curious about. And, like, for the conspiracy theorists, I think it does help that the Lakers are there. There are a, a boatload of Laker fans in Las Vegas. There are. Um, the Lakers kind of like, I don't want to call it a second home, but they played preseason games there the last few years. Um, the summer league crowds are always crazy, full of Laker fans. They have won a summer league championship there, BT. I'll be, I, I'd, I'm, I'd be, I'll be let down if it's just like, I don't know. It, it doesn't have to feel like the Final Four in college basketball, but... Oh. That's not like it. it can't feel like it should not be the same breath, but it okay. can't feel like less than that, too. And I think there's a risk, or less than like even like what we've just seen. I think there's a risk that you know you're gonna get Milwaukee and Indiana on a thir- Thursday afternoon in Las Vegas, pretty early start time. Yes, and who's gonna be there? I don't know. I think that's, that's a great I think that's. That's a question. You know I think we'll, we'll see. We'll talk about that more next week. Um, when we come back, BT, I've got some takes for you. I know you like it when I go spicy takes. Yeah, you and your spicy takes. I want to talk a little bit about you know the Lakers. Like about your spicy takes. It's pouring cold water on your spicy takes. Oh, you're some Pepsid. You're going to have to get some Pepsid. Um, Times Lakers show. You're watching this on YouTube. Dan Wakey, Bradrick Turner. We will be right back. Welcome back to the Times Lakers show. Let's wrap this up, BT. Okay, sir. Um, my spicy take. I feel like we're seeing the NBA like really change in front of our eyes right now. And what I mean by that is it just feels like you have a team like, like we watched the Lakers last night, and that is LeBron James doing everything to hang on to his place atop this league is like they're introducing something new. Um, you mentioned Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton, yeah. Earlier. Um, I kind of feel like the league is, like, getting ready to turn over. Like, we're getting ready to transition into this next wave of guys, this next wave of teams. Um, I don't know where that leaves the Lakers. Let's ignore that for now. But of those teams, who do you think is scariest? I am going to go with Minnesota. That would probably be who I'd pick, too. I mean, I think they have something there, especially with Anthony Edwards, who played for USA Basketball with our guy, mm-hmm. Austin Reeves. He is coming strong. Yeah, and, and like, they're figuring out the Towns and Gobert stuff. Gobert has been really good this yes. year. Um, you know, they're getting – Jane McDaniels is out again, but, like, he's one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA. But can I say this right quick? Close behind him? Really close behind him team that you picked to make the playoffs this year and I didn't think they would. You, I believe asked if I was on drugs when well, I said this. I still think you may be on drugs. When, when I said that Shea Gildas Alexander could win MVP, you said that was insanity. It still is. He won't win the MVP. Said could. Okay, and I'm saying he won't win MVP. We have heard LeBron complain um, note, I would say, maybe more note than complain, yes. that the Lakers injuries really robbed them of like their length and their depth on the wings. Like, the Pelicans are as wing-loaded as any team in the NBA. They are. Um, Herb Jones is awesome. I love Herb Jones. Um, I was texting with an executive the other day about, about him, and just, like, you know, he's taking some steps offensively, and, like, he's one of them. I mean, he, he's a first-team all-defensive caliber player. Yes. Um, you add Trey Murphy to that mix. Trey Murphy, yes. Um, you know, man. healthy Zion, Brandon Ingram, a tough bucket. Like, you know, you, 
Kevin Durant is a guy you can guard. There was a play, Anthony Davis guarded Kevin Durant on the perimeter. Katie just rose up, hit a three, and it was like, Katie kind of laughs a little bit, like, okay, what else am I supposed to do? Brandon Ingram hit shots like that, too. He does. Like, he is a tough, tough shot maker. That's against C.J. McCollum. And then you've got C.J. McCollum, who is tough enough that he had a collapsed lung. And he's back on the court. Dude, they, they have one of the best rookies in Jordan Hawkins, who's been amazing for and them. Let's not forget this. Jonas Valanciunas. They have a very good young coach in Willie Green. We love Willie Green. All right, we got to get out of here. Um, BT, we have a lot to do. Uh, read us in the LA Times. Um, follow us on our socials. I'm going to be in Vegas. BT, hopefully I'll see you there. Likewise, Dan.